people who grew up middle upper class. What did you not believe about low income households but it was actually true? I'll share a story that woke me up. I was a manager on a PC refresh, where we had employees out in the field. Since they were traveling, one of their perks was that we gave them $50 a day for food, all they had to do was send in their receipts. I was approving receipts for the week, and noticed that one of our employees had only submitted a receipt for $25, so I called him to make sure he understand how the reimbursement process worked, and to ask for the rest of his receipts which typically were around $300 per week. He told me that all he bought for the week was bread and bologna, since he didn't have the money to front the expenses, which is why the receipt was so low. I was floored. And that is when I started to realize what it means to not have any savings or access to credit, needless to say, we fronted him the money the next week. That a vacation isn't yearly it's a once in a lifetime event. At this time of year I'm reminded that our vacations growing up were always a trip to a relative's house. Never stayed in a hotel until I was an adult. Thought food stamps were a stamp book you trade for specific food items. Did not know utilities could be turned off due to non-payment. Did not even realize people didn't pay their bills. My family talks a lot and asks a lot of questions. My husband's family found it very offensive at first assuming we were prying and they were ashamed of their answers. The kid not going on the field trip wasn't uninterested, his parents didn't have the money for him to go. Many of us thought he was just a bad kid. Same thing with homework. My parents assisted appropriately, other kids had no help at all. Some kids didn't have money to play sports in school. Some kids had to work and give their parents their money to pay bills. The list goes on forever. I have learned so much from my husband. That people use credit cards because they didn't have the money at the time, instead of a convenient way to earn points by paying cards off in full each month. I'll state the opposite perspective. There were brief times in my childhood, during which I was hungry. There just wasn't any food, or if there was anything it was like crackers and stale cereal and stuff. I remember watching a Pizza Hut commercial on TV and thinking how amazing that would be. And this was real hunger. Very brief periods at the end of the month, while my single, and disorganized, mother was waiting for payday, after which she would make one trip to the grocery store every month. Then, as an adult, right when I got out of the military, I had a hard time getting fully on my feet, and I experienced some longer stretches of hunger, no more than two or three days, but that's a very long time when you're hungry. Somehow, I always managed to have a roof over my head, but it was close. Then onto my family, my kids are 21 and 17. Within a month they'll be 22 and 18. Adults, technically. They have never known true hunger. Anytime they were hungry, food was available to them. Pretty much whatever food they wanted. If they ever wanted more, there was more. Whether at a restaurant, at a baseball game, at a mall, or a drive through on the road. They are not in a position to appreciate how proud I am of that accomplishment. I don't know if they will ever know true hunger. To some degree, that is up to them. I assume a lot of middle class, and higher, people do not realize that true hunger exists. Kids who go to school hungry nearly every day. Kids who cannot focus on school, because they have so little at home. That some kids only got hand-me-down clothes and rarely got something new of their own. Only time I got new pants, socks, underwear and blankets was on Christmas, and that meant money was spent on essentials, not pleasures. People seemed shocked that I was ducking stoked to get new socks. I went to a private school and there was a girl that I assume was on scholarship slash financial aid and she always smelled really bad. I saw her putting on deodorant in the bathroom once. And I guess I must have stared a second too long because she told me that she didn't have anything clean to wear, because her mom didn't have money for the laundromat that week. I couldn't believe that people had to wear dirty clothes until they could go to the laundromat, I just thought everyone had a washing machine in their house. Not something I couldn't believe, but something I didn't really realize. The temperature of the house is strictly controlled in the houses of lower income, people that I know. When I was a kid, I'd turn the heat up to 80, and set the AC at 65. I'm having this fight in my house currently. 
My sister and her kids are from Florida. She grew up here though. Wisconsin. They are constantly putting the thermostat up to 70. I'm constantly putting it back down to 68. In the summer they put the central air down to 66. I fight to keep it at 78. I had to tell them I can't afford a $300 energy bill unless they want another month without internet like last month, because I can't afford to pay both. I grew up in a middle class home and am now a teacher in a title 1, aka a lower income, high school. I always knew that there were people who were less fortunate, but my first year of teaching has been a real eye opener. 5 to 7 kids sit in my room during lunch every day. I noticed that one student either didn't eat or had a coke and hot cheetahs. I learned that he only sometimes had lunch money and if he did, it was only 2 to 3 dollars. This December, many students didn't have enough warm clothes. And of that portion, most walk 1 plus miles to and from school. Many don't have the money for school supplies, let alone lab fees. Only some classes have lab fees. Mine don't. I bought big boxes of granola bars and paper, binders, etc. To give to the kids whenever they need, but as a fresh from college 22 year old with $45,000 in debt, there's only so much I can do. It sometimes breaks my heart, but I hope being a good teacher and mentor helps them in ways that money can't. Well my dad grew up extremely poor. And because of this he worked very hard to make sure we were middle class and that myself and my siblings were better off than he was. The one story he always told us that I almost couldn't believe was that in school. Can't remember what grade level or how old he was, but he had an art assignment to draw his favorite pair of shoes. He didn't have a favorite pair, he only had one pair of sneakers that he had for over a year. They were atty and gross but that's all his family could afford. He was embarrassed and didn't do the project, and his teacher pointed it out in class so my dad just walked up to his desk, took a shoe off, placed it on the teacher's desk, and just said that's why. The teacher didn't know what to say, so my dad took his shoe and sat back down. That story always blew my mind and made me realize how lucky I was, since I didn't have to worry about where my shoes were coming from. That actually I now drive my mom crazy because I make sure to use my shoes and other clothes as long as I can. Even though they are extremely old but it makes me feel a little better knowing I'm using things to the fullest, rather than until they're out of season or anything like that. I've told this story before, but I remember in high school when I got new sneakers, my mom would wear my old ones to work. She said she didn't want to wear nice shoes in the factory and get them dirty. But as I got older I realized what havoc that did to her back, walking on concrete wearing a teenager's old sneakers. I took her to Coles and had her pick out a new pair of sneakers and continued to do so for her birthday slash mother's day. She works so hard and life hasn't been the easiest for her. What it meant to not be able to afford something. Or to be broke. My parents would say, we can't afford that, but it really meant. We'd rather spend that $1,000 on ourselves slash on our next vacation slash whatever, instead of on a new toy slash computer slash phone for you. We're broke meant, we've used too much money in our checking account. We'd still have saving accounts and investments, of course. So no money really just meant, no more money that we should be spending right now. Because I grew up this way, I viewed money as something that just magically never ran out. I would get really annoyed when my friends would say, I can't afford that, or, I'm broke, as a reason for not doing something, because I viewed it as an excuse instead of a reality. The first time as an adult when I literally couldn't afford something, because the $50 check I had deposited hadn't gone through and so my the bit card was declined, was a surreal, and horrible, feeling. I suddenly understood what I'm broke, and I can't afford that, really meant. That some people can't afford to fill up their car with petrol. I loved when I used to read articles of money saving tips hoping for something new to me. When they started out with, save $5 a day by cutting out pricey coffee drinks. I knew I could just close a tap because if I had $5 to spend on coffee every day, I sure as hell wouldn't be walking to work the last 3 days of every pay period because I was out of gas. That was a few years and a couple of jobs ago, I no longer struggle to buy gasoline. Just how little money people are paid. When I was younger, 
I figured that approximately $40,000 per year was the lowest someone could earn. LOL. Minimum wage full time is about $12,000. In the UK, I have genuinely encountered people from wealthy and rural backgrounds who genuinely thought that house numbers were only an American thing, and that every house in Britain had a name. I'd hate to be a postman if that were the case. From the flip side, when I was in college, I actually lost friends because I couldn't afford to do the activities they did, like going to bars every weekend, or going to multiple concerts slash raves slash festivals over the summer. It was partly about not having the money, and partly about not being able to take time off work. It was embarrassing to be 20 and tell other 20 year olds I couldn't afford what they took for granted, so I'd tell them I didn't like bars or I didn't like raves. They took that to mean I didn't like them. I always thought people talking about their fridge being empty was an exaggeration. Like there's plenty of food, just nothing you want to eat. Then I started dating a girl who didn't have a lot of money, and I opened the fridge door and saw only Hawaiian punch and ketchup. And I was just like, well shit. Grew up dirt poor in the country. Things middle class people didn't believe. People don't live in single wides because they like it. They do it because it's all they can afford. Out in the sticks, a double wide with good underpinning is middle class. Having a garden is not a whimsical thing that people do for kicks. It can be the only way you eat decent veggies. A space heater is how you stay warm when keeping the trailer heat on will result in $400 utility bills, and that's more than rent slash trailer mortgage. I learned to shoot a gun at 12 because I had to help put food on the table. A single deer is good meat for a long ass while. There are people who are one generation removed from outhouses, if they haven't actually used one. If there is a snowstorm, canning keeps you alive because the power will be out for two weeks sometimes. My grandmother literally fed 10 people one winter for a week and a half. People join the military in relatively high numbers because it's the easiest way out of crushing poverty or about the only way they are going to college. My wife and I grew up very blue collar, now we are doing quite well for ourselves. What was really hard for us to realize is how much people rely on each other at the blue collar level. People don't have much so they have social networks to help each other out. Go to any blue collar neighborhood and you'll see kids outside playing, adults out socializing, people working on their cars, etc. Go to an upper middle class or wealthy neighborhood and for the most part you won't see those things. Poorer people need their social network to survive. The difficult part for the upwardly mobile is that once you make enough money to leave blue collar life, the social protection tends to go away as well. Randy down the street isn't going to fix your furnace for a case of beer, your neighbor Jim isn't going to help you dig that hole in your yard in exchange for watching his kids, so he and his wife can see a movie tomorrow night. Stuff like that does happen with the wealthy, but not nearly as much as with the lower income folks. To us at least, it seems like the more a person gains in wealth the more they lose with the sense of community. I could be wrong. Eating out at restaurants isn't common for everyone. My mom gave a girl on my basketball team a ride home from an away game. I can't remember what the reason. We decided to grab a bite to eat and asked her if she had a preference. She picked a buffet place, saying that it is where her family goes. Turns out it was the only restaurant she'd been to, other than fast food from time to time. A few months later she was with us at an Italian place that was slightly upscale. She didn't know how to order, so my mom did it for her. For dessert, she asked for cherry cheesecake and then whispered to me that she just scraped the cherries off. I flagged down the server and had them change it to plain cheesecake. I felt so sorry for her because she was just uncomfortable. I also realized I was pretty spoiled and appreciated my parents much more, 